This conference will now be recorded. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, this is Douglas Warren, oh, president, president of the Bisbee or the <laughs> Planning and Zoning Commission, Bisbee Planning and Zoning Commission. I'll convene our meeting at uh, 555. Uh, call to order, commission members, John Ballack. John present. It looks like he's here. Hmm. Well, Douglas John is here. Nancy Piranha, I heard you, right? Yep. Andy Hoosman. Andy. I think she's caller yeah. number four. Cause I talked to Sandy and I um, told her that we were, she was having trouble getting on. And so then I, I um, tried to, I was here in City Hall and I tried to get on and it just found um, having to change the passwords and all kinds of things. And um, I told her to hang on that we would be opening. Jennifer Ryan. What did you say? Jennifer Ryan. <clears throat> Who all is here? Um, Kirk Ayers, an applicant. Okay. The ones I'm seeing, Doug, is we've got um, we've got Nancy, we've got uh, Mike, we've got you. That's not quite a um, quorum yet. And then there's, um, I guess, Mr. Ayers. It's one of these callers here. Um, and John is all black, but it shows him being on. That's a different. Oh, oh, John Barnes. Contact information here. I will call John. There we go. His mailbox is full and he can't accept any more. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think maybe he was squeaking. Yeah, it's showing him up here. Let me try calling Sandy. Joe? Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I did. Um, try getting on. Everybody else is, or not everybody else is on, but plenty of people are on. Try it now.
Thank you guys for bearing with us. <laughs> oh my goodness. John, if, if John can't get on, he might have to log out and then log back in. Have you have you tried, I tried that? Have you tried doing going on the telephone? Yeah. This is the first one we've done this. Yeah. Water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's wrong with that. If you go to, it's a, you just use the number. That's what I did, and it went. I went on. But um. Hello. Here. I'm going to email John and tell him that. somebody hello is that sandy yeah i'm on the phone excellent thank you sandy uh-huh okay well we, we have a quorum shall i hey, the people I, here yeah we've got um nancy mike and doug and um Sandy. Okay. And how do we want to proceed? I, it, it's really hard to hear. Do we want to reschedule this meeting? Well, we got public notices out. Um, this reschedule is going to be um, really okay. difficult and expensive. Can you guys hear okay, me at all? I can hear you. Sandy? Well, why don't you? I can hear when, yeah, Joe, I can hear when you're calling. Can somebody send me the hyperlink to get on the computer? I'll give it a whirl. Okay. In the meantime, I'll stay on the phone. <laughs> I just sent I the hyperlink to everybody, uh, but I can I sent it in the chat. But I can send it to who's asking for it. Who is the one Sandy. requesting? Sandy. Sandy. Okay. Let's yeah. see. Your name isn't coming up to message, but um, what's your email, Sandy? It's S. Lejudas. It's S L A J U D I C E at yahoo.com. All right, here it comes. All right, I just emailed that to you uh, from oh, that and say it live if it went into your junk folder. Okay, I just sent you, Sandy. Ah. There she is. Yay! Hey. All right. Thank you. And is John here, Joe? John Bayless? It's all black. I can't... Um, and I tried calling him, and he's not answering. 
So, and I sent him a email. Let me see. Um, yeah, I um, it, it got sent up. So. I'm on the phone yet, so. Okay, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and restart this meeting then, or give that a whirl. Doug, we've got a quorum at least. Okay, can people hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, then I call this meeting to order of the Signing and Zoning Commission in the City of Bisbee. Uh, time is 6.06. Uh, those present are John Ballard, Bala, are you present? Douglas Dunn is present. Sandy Hoosman? Yes. Okay. Nancy Piranha? Yes. Jennifer Ryan? Michael Smetzer? Yes. Okay. And Lewis Pollock? Okay. We'll call to the public. Or is there any item that someone wants to speak to that's not on the agenda? If not, we'll go to agenda item one. And I'll just do an abbreviated here public hearing to consider a rezoning application at 302 South Washington Avenue. Discussion of possible recommendations of the mayor and city council. Joe, would you want to give us information on this? Sure. This is this piece of property is city is city owned, and the city is interested in um, having it developed or you know co-developing with somebody, but to, to be able to um, maybe place some some tiny houses on the property, but to do that, we're, we need to change the zoning. And so the easiest one that's, that, that has a lot of opportunities for residential, as um, I think I had sent you guys this information, but is, uh, is RM. And that is consistent with what's across the highway on Washington there. So um, that's, what, that's what we're looking to change it to. And uh, to do this would be also consistent with our general plan um, regarding infill and um, the development there of the San Jose neighborhoods. The, um, and we, we'd like that to happen, but you guys are the boss here and um, give us some direction. Describe the property to me. I was there and I'm a little bit confused. There's 302, is, is that city off? Because now there's a manufactured housing house on that property, 302. Uh, you went north instead of south. This is on oh, south. Okay, the other side so of the highway. It's undeveloped property. Okay. Okay. So it's a dead end down there. Yep. Okay. Is there any input from this is a public hearing from anyone? I did. I didn't get any notification of any sort from anybody on that. Hey Joe. Okay. Uh, this is Mike. Does the city have a partner in mind already? To develop this property, we do. There's been a there's been a lady who's interested in um, in making in making this happen, and um, we were trying to facilitate that. Can you disclose that name? I don't have that name in front of me, so no, I don't have that name. Is that the name that was on the application in our email? I believe I believe you don't have anybody on there but the city of Bisbee for this one. Right. I filled out I filled out that application myself. Is it a local party? No. I think so. I really don't know the lady. I've um, talked with her on the phone several times and participated in. She did a, a presentation for the um, library on on um, co housing. Okay, so this is co-housing, okay. Other questions, comments? Uh, Joe, I do think I saw that on the email, I think I saw, is it's a lady uh, and there's a, she's 40% owner with her husband and then 20% is the other investor, is that right? I have no clue, I didn't send you anything like that. Okay. That was, that was the old deed when the city bought the land. Okay, understood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody want to make a motion on this? Um, I will. 
I move the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to Mayor and City Council the rezoning of APN 102-15057 from C2 to RM, the City of Bisbee at 302 South Washington Avenue. And who made this motion? Sandy. Sandy, okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. And who made that? Is that John? Nancy. Mike? Huh? I can't. Who seconded the motion? Nancy. Nancy, okay. All in favor then, let me do a roll call. Sandy? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Doug? Yes. So unanimous. Four. We'll move on then to the next agenda item. Uh, and item two, public hearing to reconsider an application for transfer of city property. Uh, discussion and possible recommendation of the mayor and city council. And this is the item that on 125 Star Avenue that we discussed before. Uh, Joe, would you like to carry this forward? Yes. Um, the reason why we're hearing this again is because when, when we got this, I discussed that with discussed this issue with um, some of the people here in City Hall, and um, we thought that it would be better to not have the lot right next door to the one that Mr. Ayers wanted, was um, the same size, which is rather small and kind of down in the wash, so it doesn't. Um, it's not a very nice piece of property. But if it didn't go with the first piece, it was never. It was just going to sit there. Um, and never be used, in my opinion. And so, um, what we did was we brought it we we brought it back again with the second piece, and we're we're adding that on there for kind of a um, a very reasonable price, I think, for Mr. Ayers. But um, I think it's better for everybody this way. And if you remember that the um, that the fire department had um, had rang in on this and said that it was. It was a good idea. The Public Works had had said yes. The police department um, hadn't um, responded. I'm recommending that the that this pass because it's it's good for the city, and um, it's a it's a reasonable thing. Okay. Is Mr. Ayer still on the line here with us? Yes. Hey, would you wish to speak on this? Oh, I, I think Joe summed it up pretty well. Okay. Um, yeah, I was I was willing to buy the additional piece in order, you know, to move ahead. Okay, great. Other, uh, do we have questions and comments from commission members? I have, I have a question. This is Sandy. Um, hi, Sandy. Hi. The original three thousand square feet that came before us last time was that was. Uh, going for a sale price of $2 per square foot. But I see now that the price has been reduced. Is this for the entire 6000 to $1.33? And what's the reason for that? Well, the reason for that is because we took the um, the original price and then added, I'm trying to think what I figured for the um, the lower lot, but then it's got to be equalized. So it came out at $1.33. But because the bottom lot isn't worth very much, like I had said, it's... Um, if you looked at the property, it's it's kind of down in the wash and on on a very steep hillside, and it doesn't um, it doesn't front on any usable road. That portion doesn't, so it's it's a lot cheaper. So that brought the price of the total square foot price down, but it brought the price up. But it'll so, still have to go. It'll still go for public auction. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this, Joe. This is John Fraser and Aviva Trustman. I see it, John. Will, yeah, will public auction, is there going to be an announcement making this available to the public and anybody who's interested in that parcel? Yes, sir. And the other part was you said that you had, you would look into making sure that the county separated that from the other parcel yes. with the same APN. There's a much larger yep. parcel across the street that shares the same ID number and and having dealt with the city and the county on a number of these issues down the road I don't want to see this number come up or I would 
hate to see this number come up in, in relation to the much larger, almost half acre parcel with the same ID number across the street. Is there any intention or is there a way to distinguish one parcel from the other at this point? Right now they have the same parcel number, but we've got maps and everything that are associated with this application that are very specific and um, for, the, for the lot numbers that are down there by Mr. Ayer's property. And um, once it once it gets if it goes into a different um, owner's name, there's no way that the county will be able to leave those numbers the same. I don't agree with them being the same today, John, but that's the reality that we have. Well, I'm just concerned. I mean, that we we plugged in the same numbers, having received your call, your, your public notice. We plugged in the numbers to the county <laughs> recording assessor's map, and not only did we not see the parcel that you're discussing in front of Mr. Ayer's property, the only one that came up was the half acre parcel across Star Avenue. And, and down the road, you, you know a few years ago that very parcel was under some debate uh, yes. uh, from a neighbor who wanted to acquire that property. And I, I just think the, the easiest way is, is to deal with that now you know, b before this property is transferred to Mr. Ayers, then after, and, you know, somebody might come in and say, well, I purchased this property from Mr. Ayers and it identifies it as the APN number, and the, the APN number uh, 103-60249. And according to the map that's shown on the county assessor's office, that includes that half acre across the, across Star Avenue. Okay, so the, the, the option will be very specific, John. It's based on a map. It's also based on the square footage there. And um, it's based on, on the description of the property as lot. Um, I don't have this. Well, I do. I take time to look for it here. But it's, um, it's described as by the, by the lot numbers, which also differentiate it very readily. And it will be taken care of, but it's not taken care of at this point. There's no way that I could have done it in the last two days, John. Is, is there a way that when this comes up for auction that the, whether it's Mr. Ayers or anybody else who acquires that property can uh, be certain to record it with a survey? Because that's what we do things by meets and bounds. It'll be, it won't be by a survey, but it will be by a legal description. Okay. Okay. That's, a, that's fine. This will be my... Uh, we did some research on this today also, and, and I also actually went up to the property today. I can't figure out what property we're talking about up there. I did notice that the there's a house on top of the hill that appears to be vacant that I've never seen anybody in. Um, that's Mr. Beard. Yeah, Mr. That's, yeah that's, that's, are you planning on moving to Bisbee, or are you going to stay in Oregon? Um, I'm, I'm in between, and, and what, what's happened, I, I would have been there here this last summer, but I was working in Yellowstone, um, and but I am retired, and so I'm, I'm in between properties right now, so I'll be back there in February. Is this the forum to discuss uh, Mr. Ayer's intent for use of the property? Not really. Well, I, okay. Well, I, I only ask because if he if he wants it for parking, we may have a different response to it uh, versus whether he intends to erect another structure on that property. And well, or it was primarily yeah, it was primarily for parking. The original application says for parking. And I do see on the original, phone, the original uh, application, it does identify lots 19 and 20. So will it be classified with some zoning distinction at this point? Can you be more specific? What kind of zoning distinction? Well, I'm saying, will, will this be, you know, if this transfers, will it be zone transfer with a zoning of R1 or C1 or RM um, or combination this, this, is 
Pardon me, John. This is not an application for rezoning. This is only for sale of property. It's R1 right now, and it would remain that. Okay. Does anyone else have any comments or questions on this? Well, like I said, Thank you, John. This is Mike. I'm still confused of what property it is. You know, on the drawing that I have, uh, it shows as you know the old lot. First of all, um, in the application, they're using the original um, assessor's map from I don't know when. It was it was quite some time ago. But if you go to the current county assessor's map, it's significantly different. Mike, did you, did you go out to the site where the house is on the hill? Yes. Okay. Well, that is Mr. Ayer's house. There's the road coming up that's on the south side of that house. Did you see that? It's, a, it's knocked down grass, yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a public easement or public right-of-way. And... Just to the okay. south of, of that public right of way is where these lots are on that um, steep hillside there. And there was a public well, notice. That was lot lot. On... I'm sorry. It would be sort of a triangular lot. The rectangular. Triangular. I'm I understood sorry. you said triangular. I said rectangular. Well, it is rectangular. Okay. Then, um, like I said, I'm just confused. And again, my alert, my last comment was, didn't the city sell a piece of property just up the canyon from there on Star just recently for about two and a half bucks a square foot? I think it was two, but yeah. Okay. But that's but that was if you've been up there, you see that it's, that's flat material that we're talking about over there. And okay. I don't think I don't think it's unreasonable the price, but a public auction. It's going to be a public auction, Mike. And um, public options determine what the true value is of everything. I understand. Just, just the beginning that we're looking at, just to start with price. Like I said, I, I, I was just confused with the application. It was very difficult to understand. And I, I guess I'm just whining about that. I'm done with questions. Joe, I have one more question. Is the public uh, For the public option, do you send out notice to those same, same people who receive this public notice as well? Um, I'm not sure, John. It's been so long since we had a public auction. Uh, there'll be, it'll be going before the, there'll be a public notice when it goes before the city council. Let me see if I can look that up really fast here. But it'll, it'll be, actually it will be at least a public notice that is on the city's website and the city's um, bulletin boards at the very least. Okay. It will be public noticed. Okay. okay. Thank you. You want to move forward on this? Is a motion? Uh, I'll read the motion. I move the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to Mayor and City Council the transfer of 6,000 square feet property from APN 103-60249 for the sum of $1.33 per square foot. Is there a second? I like to amend that motion. It, it, it appears that we're just selling it outright. It doesn't state that we put it up yeah. for public auction at a minimum price of a dollar thirty-three per square foot. Okay, that's been incorporated into the, into the motion. Then the motion that would be for auction at a minimum of one dollar and thirty-three cents per square feet. I'll second that motion, Mike. Okay. And let's take a vote here then on this. Um, Sandy? Yes. Nancy? Nancy? 
you got to turn your speaker back on. Yes. Mike? Yes. And Doug? Yes. So it's unanimous four votes. Okay, the next agenda item is four, and that's been removed. Is that correct from the no. agenda? Huh? No. What happened is that Nina, Nina made up the agenda based on the information that was there, and um, it got kind of, we got a little bit sideways on this, that, that the um, Ms. Ponte had originally given me an a, um, application, but we didn't. I think I sent this out to some of you or all of you, I'm not sure. But that we got the application, I, we we public noticed it, and then I realized that um, Ms. Ponte had sent um, emails stating prior to this, not as a reflection on her, but she said that she didn't want to do that, that she didn't want to participate in that, and so the city is um, actually the applicant, and so we're moving forward with the um, with the potential um, auction of that property, and the city is sponsoring it. Um, I'm okay. sorry to hear about this is Ginger. I was finally able to get back. <laughs> Welcome, Ginger. Thank you. I still can't get the computer to work, but the telephone is connected. Yeah. Good to have you. Oh. Okay, so Joe, would you to want to Joe, would you want to describe oh. this? This agenda item for us, then. Okay. It's a little. It's a small piece of property. It's about thereabouts of 731 square feet, and that's um, 0.02 of an acre. It's unaddressed property. There, there had. Um, I guess back in the 80s, there was a there was a building on that site that got tore down. According to what I've been told, I don't remember the building. Um, Much later than that, actually. Okay. The um, the property is it, it's small, but it's but it's right there. I mean, it's a really great location, and there's no sense for the city to be sitting on it. And so um, that's why we move forward with the potential auction of the property. It's basically one. Now, are the comments or questions? Are we talking about just that little bitty triangle on the corner of the parking lot in Commerce Street? Yes. yes. This is it's, this it's is not exactly a triangle, but it is uh, um, it is kind of triangular. Well, I mean, I've seen it, and there's a hillside included in that little piece of land too, right? I think there is. Yes. At one yeah. time, there was a beautiful house on that property that Maynard Maynard Krebs built, and it was 350 square feet that was, you know, it felt like 700 square feet. It was on the home tour one year. It was a beautiful house that he built right there, and I think it was when the city had to do channel work uh, underneath the parking lot that they bought it uh, from the current owner. And raised it. Like, correct anybody can correct me if I'm wrong. Doug, you may know. I don't. It, it was it was not that long. Maybe 15 years ago, there was a, a beautiful brand new house that list existed there for about three or four years, and it was gone. Hmm. Uh, on that little piece of property, or did it extend where the parking lot is now? No, it was right there. And as I said, it was it the house. I think it was literally 320 square feet. And Maynard was a carpenter, and you walked in there, and he had cupboards that came out from underneath beds, it came out of walls, it came out of ceilings. So it felt much larger than it was. But that's exactly where it was in, in that little triangle. It didn't extend out in any direction. It was just uh, on what is now a dirt triangle by the telephone pole there. And I think the, I think the city raised it when they did some work on the on the channel underneath the. the yeah, they had to retimber. They had to retimber that channel that goes underneath Commerce yeah. Street. Yeah, and I, I think at that time they bought it from the then owner and and raised it. 
Um, Joe, have you discussed this with the fire department at all? Fire yeah, and police. The fire department um, was was um, affirm gave me an affirmative um, response that they were they were in favor of selling the property that they could not see any issue that they would be having. You know, my real concern is is the uh, traffic that goes around the parking lot in Commerce Street if something were to be set up there. That could be a concern almost anywhere too. It would be, it would be difficult to have any set setbacks on that property as currently yeah. prescribed by the regulations. Right. Commercial property doesn't necessarily need a setback either, John. So if it's zoned R1, is that the one we're talking about? It really, yeah, I do believe it is zoned R1, is what I had looked it up. But um, everything by um, by default is R, wound up being R1 when they had made up the zoning maps for reasons beyond what I understand. And so that's that's zoned R1, but um, I prob probably should have rezoned it at the same meeting here, or, or attempted to rezone it. But um, it's currently R1, but it'd be easily changed. Assuming it would go through the same process as the last property we're talking about. Public auction. Public auction, and then whomever bought it would uh, uh, apply if they so desired to have the zoning changed. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. What is the price per square foot on that one? Hmm? I was going to. I was recommending five dollars a square foot as a as a. And by the way, that the wording that was used on all of these, it, it said the sum of. We want to say the minimum bid of when we, when it comes it comes time if you guys want to um, make a motion, but five dollars, Sandy. I'm I'm a little confused still. Are we actually? Is it? Um, this is for the transfer of property. Yet you said she um, withdrew her application. Yes. Well, no, she didn't withdraw her application. It was just the the transaction was never um, completed. There was no um, exchange of money. And I, I can answer that question. I can speak to that a little bit. Um, I was actually looking at the time at a different piece of property, and I actually learned about this property and where it was located because I saw the signpost go up, and I wasn't sure if it was um, somebody else who was bidding on that one or if it was a mistake. So anyway, the parcel number I was originally working with was meant to be a different property. Then we found out that there was some confusion here, and then I retracted my application for the original property that I was interested in primarily because I wasn't sure when a public auction would happen, and if that's going to be um, sometime well into the future, maybe after COVID's over or a year to three years from now, I didn't see the point at the time to go ahead and move forward with applying for a transfer property until we get through uh, the COVID situation. So I submitted an application for a parcel that was different than this one, and I retracted it the following morning, um, and then later found out that my name was still attached to this application. So it was just a little bit of confusion. Um, but what I did learn about this property, um, when I started to notice it and I saw the sign posted there is that yes it was a tiny house at one time and if any of you remember Bill and Val that owned the Grand uh, they at one time inhabited or owned this tiny house and at some point in time it was um, removed due to some sewer issues or something that took place underneath uh, the property but currently it is located as you uh, suspect on Commerce Street and the parking lot corner just below 52A, uh, which is a residence. And right now it is being used as parking, um, whether that's Ooh. legal or illegal parking is, is not to be determined by me, but there are some, some definite um, parking occurrences that are taking place there now. 
I hope that provides a little bit of background information. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, to answer. Other comments or questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. So the <clears throat> the the parking that you're referring to, uh, I know that I I know the house, I know the parking, and you're referring to the sign that says this these two parking spots are reserved for this house only. Is it, and then you're then that. No. Mm -hmm. Don't answer. No, more. I was just the, the sign I was mentioning was that I saw the public notice sign posted mm -hmm. on a tree at this lot. And I was curious about it, and I didn't know that my name was attached to that signpost on that tree until I saw the agenda and realized it was not the one that I had originally had been considering. But there are no no parking signs on this spot. There are people parking there without any no parking signs. Okay. No offense intended on that, you bet. Easy mistake. It's all good. Thank you. Okay, this is Doug. We've this is Doug. We've had discussions in the past about parking, public parking needs in in Bisbee, and they're quite short. Uh, um, this is an example of piece of city property that could be incorporated into some type of public parking. Is that something we are interested in doing at some future time? Let me see what, um, if I got an email back from, from Mr. Haro regarding this. Uh, this is Mike. I'm familiar with that lot. It's, it's on, half of the lot is on a slope. Uh, it's basically got one compact parking stall on it. And that's right. about what we're going to get out of it. And it has been used for quite some time by somebody that lives in the neighborhood. And there's a power pole there too, right? Right next to it. Right yes. next to it. And of relevant information, I um, do have an email here from Albert Achave saying that the police department has no concerns with it, with the, with the possible transfer of that property. Okay. Does someone want to make a motion? How do we want to move forward on this? I would gladly make a motion, um, but I did not receive the agenda, so I can't read the motion. But I would gladly do it if I if I had the the paper in front of me. I'll read the motion then. I'll read it. It says, I move the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to Mayor and City Council the transfer of 731 square feet property from APN 103-60-249 for the minimum sum of $500 per square feet at public auction. All right, we want to include that. I second that motion. Okay. I'll take a vote then. I think, read, I think you read the wrong one, possibly, Doug. Agenda item <laughs> is a different parcel. Well, well, let me see. No, am I looking at the? I'm sorry about this. Um, two four nine. That's what I see on the public notice. Six four three five. The agenda has five dollars per square foot. And right. I found a picture of the property. Okay. This is let me let me open up and, and see what that that parcel ID number is because that one zero three six two four three five according to your public notice. Right. Okay, so then the motion is stated incorrectly. Yes, 435. Thank you, Doug. So APN, what's the number again? 103? 62435. 435. Okay, so I 
motion is amended then to the parcel number is APN 10562-435. Is that correct? 103-62. 103, okay. <laughs> APN 103-62-435. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. And, and we propose then for a minimum of five dollars per square foot at auction. The auction, uh, right? This would, this on, would be um, quite an auction, wouldn't it? Sorry, guys. I just want to note that on the agenda, there's two different numbers referenced. So up where the um, agenda item three states the number you just read, APN 103-62435. But if you scroll down to the following page, it then also references the same square footage with 103.60249. So there are two different right. numbers on the agenda. And I have right. a picture what... post, but I can't read it. So. Right. 249 is the... Star Avenue property parcel number. Four three five is the correct is the correct parcel ID number for the parcel that we're talking about. I've got the map open right now, and I'd already checked. Okay, tell me again. One zero three sixty two four thirty five is the correct parcel ID number for the for the property that we are currently talking about. Okay, and that was that was my motion. And and the dollar amount and the square footage would not require public auction, isn't that true? No, because but, it's not. But don't we want to do? But don't we want to do this by? <laughs> don't we want to do this by public auction, though? Yes. When when it's associated with somebody's property and they thought it was theirs, we don't go to prop. We don't go to or if they've been using it, we don't go to public auction, but um, everything else has to go to public auction, I believe. Okay. Well, that's why I inserted that in the motion as well. Huh. Do, I need, do I need to repeat the motion? I think Please. you said it right, Doug, didn't you? That's what I thought. Is everyone clear on the motion, or do I need to repeat? I'll repeat it again. I move to the Planning and Zoning Commission, recommend the mayor and council for transfer of two hundred. Uh, 731 square feet property from APN 103-62-435 for the minimum of $5 per square foot at auction. To be auctioned. I second that motion. Okay, there's a second. And who was the second? Oh. Mike. Mike, Mike, okay. We'll vote on this, Sandy. No. No. Okay. Nancy. Yes. Yes. Mike. Yes. Okay. Doug. Yes. So it's three to one. I'm here. What about Jennifer? Both... Oh, pardon me, Jennifer. Jennifer, pardon me. I knew that, Jennifer. What is your vote? Yes. Yeah. So it's four to one. I apologize, Jennifer. I you. I apologize. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now where are we here? We're agenda item five. Is that correct? Yes. It is a public hearing to consider rezoning. Well, we're on number four, guys. Number four. We just did number four. I guess I let's see. I mean, Looks like we don't have a three. <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. We I have okay. not used to it. Sorry. So we're agenda item five, public hearing to consider a rezoning application at 60 Main Street. Discussion and possible recommendations of the mayor and city council. Uh, Joe, would you want to describe this for us? I'm just che double checking those numbers on that one. Okay, this is the request to rezone. This was this is the applicant is Mrs. Saro, and um, they're using it right now as a 
as a location for a mobile food vending and um and it's zoned r1 it needs to be if they're going to use it they have to it it's a good location for a commercial for commercial zoning and it's all congruous there it's a, it's not a bad idea but right now like i said everything by default was was put into r1 and that's why it's r1 right now and um we're trying to legitimize what they're doing there Is there anyone to speak on this? Is Miss Asaro present? We have some concerns about um, uh, the idea of the the type of commercial property that's being it's being utilized for right now, and the parking issue that we have in that vicinity. And the other the other issue is. While we've got vacant buildings and limited parking, why they can't be using uh, a vacant building, you know, to its highest and best use of the property. Um, I would love to explain that. Go right ahead. I'm I'm open. So I can answer your question. So um, basically, this business is a result of COVID and social distancing. And we have noticed that there has been a push with the new world in which we live in to have outdoor eateries and takeaway options. So um, this Get Some Burgers food stand has come out of COVID-19 and it has come out of a situation in which there's a need that needs to be filled for food options where people can take away or they can choose to dine at but it's all open air, outdoors, and social distance. In addition to that, um, this business has been a really positive thing that has come out of COVID-19, not only for myself. I've been in the tourism industry since I was 17. I'm 47. And uh, my business was basically put in a coma in February, much before anybody else's businesses went down. I was in the, in the business of meetings corporate events and travel. That's not going to be happening. So, um, you know, kind of as maybe what was a knee-jerk reaction, I started to look at what are some things that I can do here on the home front. I'm living in Bisbee full-time. I moved here three years ago. Where is there a need that needs to be filled? And what can I do with the skills that I have and put them to work? Um, right now, there is not a lot of interest in being indoors. As you know, Roca is doing takeaway. Tweez is doing takeaway. High Desert Market is offering takeaway and outdoor seating. Screaming Banshee Pizza is doing takeaway and outdoor seating. So there's a big movement right now to not offer dining indoors, though recently over the last couple of weeks, the governor just made that allowable again. But you probably saw a lot of restaurants and businesses close down. And Main Street was looking very sad and very depressed. And people are still looking for options outside of creating their own meals at home. And so that is how this has kind of emerged as a reaction to what's going on in the world today. And it's not really viable at this time, number one, not knowing how well the business would do to encumber ourselves during a time when I've been financially stripped to pay a mortgage on a building where it's not encouraged to cook or serve indoors. So yes, in the future, um, if the business is to grow over time and if we can go back to a world in which it makes sense to rent a commercial space to expand a restaurant with indoor dining, much like it was in 2019, then that would be a, a definite direction we would want to go in. However, that's not what the world's looking for right now. I hope that answers your question. Would you please identify yourself for the record? Yes, this is Yvette Ponte. I am the tenant. I am Maria Asaro's tenant at 60 Main Street where we are operating a mobile food stand. And during the time that we applied for the rezoning, um, we have been kind of test marketing that on that space to see if it was even viable as a commercial zone during the pending um, period of the last six weeks before we could have this meeting. There are currently no utilities to this site, is that correct? 
That is correct. There's no water. There's no um, sewer. There are no electric or power lines there. It's for those of you who are not familiar uh, with the space, and maybe those of you that are, um, Maria Saro purchased the space nearly 10 years ago, and it has been primarily dominated yes. by um, grasses and other areas. Um, it, it's, it's a very long, it's like a 66-foot long space uh, that is only about 28 feet wide, and it sits right above the parking lot across from 61, which many of you may know as the Grand Hotel. So it's it's a space that could possibly be used as a very large parking space above the existing yeah. parking lot. Um, it did not have an address. We worked uh, with Mr. Ward in the city at the time that we leased it. It had a parcel number, but it didn't have an address. So in 100 years, uh, it has not been assigned an address. It has industrial railings across and around it, which gives the impression that it was a loading dock at one time or was possibly a platform for the railway that went through there. Um, I did send some images today which I can show you that will show that there was a Kitchell's Cafe and candy shop originally at 60 Main Street and that um, was all destroyed in a fire and prior to that area becoming a parking lot it was all uh, commercial shops and stores uh, in that space and that space in particular may belong to one of the other buildings in front of it as it didn't have its own address. And, and Ms. Asaro, I really kind of have stepped over here because she may want to speak about uh, her property that she owns. Yes, um, I did purchase the property about 10 years ago with the idea to at some point develop it um, as a commercial and to have it rezoned. I wasn't quite ready to do that yet because I'm uh, employed for the school district and I saw it as a retirement venture at some point. And so I was very happy when uh, approached me about this and they've cleaned up the property. They've, they've given it some great use. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm very pleased. And I think it's good, for, it's good for them, it's good for me, and I think it's good for, for the city of Bisbee right now to have the property used in this way. Uh, prior to them moving in, there was a lot of trash on the property. Um, there was a house nearby in its previous rendition that was uh, kind of a drug house and there was a lot of trash on the property at that point and spillover from that house next door which has since been sold and fixed up a little but there still was a little bit of an element of people kind of camping out in that area and next to that area so having it used in this way right now is definitely an improvement in my opinion and as the owner I feel comfortable in that it's being taken care of so I would like to see it transfer it as commercial at this point. I don't see any use of it uh, uh, for residential property. Uh, I, have a question. I have a question for um, either Maria or Yvette. Um, I'm definitely pro-business. I'm definitely pro-restaurant. I have a background in food and beverage. Um, my concern is um, just the way that the trash is right now in the city of Bisbee. Um, where, where would you, where, what about the trash situation first and foremost? And then second of all, if someone pulls up into the parking lot, um, and they think that it's for your business, then they could potentially be taking parking, already parking spots away from the city, um, because they are under some impression that they may be belong to your business. Could you address those? I, I would like, if, if I may echo your sentiments, Nancy, for those of you who don't know, we own a business that's right across the street from that, virtually directly across the street from that, um, a door up the street, up Main Street. And under nor normal circumstances, I appreciate the need to create and generate revenue and business during these trying times. We have been close open a total of 24 days in the last 10 months. That's not because we haven't been allowed to, it's because we don't feel that it's safe to do so. Um, and and that's, that's an issue for a, another discussion that we've had with some other members of the city council and so forth. 
That said, under normal circumstances, parking on Main Street has, has continued to get worse and worse and worse. We've been on uh, either where we are or directly across the street at 76 Main, we're currently at 79 Main, for 10 years, during which time the parking issues have only worsened uh, to the extent, and, and as we all know, there's no enforcement of the regulations around this town. And I, uh, I, I break them as often as anybody because I know they're, they're not gonna happen. We, I park illegally in that parking lot all the time because there isn't any parking legal, <laughs> there isn't sufficient legal parking there. My concern about this would be that people either coming, seeing a sandwich board that you currently have out on the sidewalk, coming to have a sandwich or whatever fare they have for lunch, are either going to uh, think they can pull in and temporarily stop while they pick something up, or they're going to use parking that uh, would be used for all of Main Street while they have their meals. There was a time when any new business was uh, that was considering opening was required to provide parking, a certain amount of parking that went along with it. And I, I realize that's for a, you know, maybe there's some distinction between a, per, a permanent structure and a temporary outdoor to go facility, but that issue is still going to remain, as Nancy says. You're gonna be parking in, in that parking lot is tight as it is, and that's not going to make it any easier for for those of you who do business or our customers uh, to park. And you park only for your customers, okay. and not for other, everybody else? Yeah, pardon me? I said, John, do you think that the parking in there is only for the businesses that have been established up to now and not for the future businesses? No, but we do have other Main Street opportunities that share the parking. Yeah. And so we don't have to create more, I mean, it may be a great spot for during COVID, and right now, you know, orange cones seem to be the, the best way to identify a parking spot or other means. But, you know, while COVID won't last forever, we hope, that certainly other people will move into the other buildings is our hope to uh, resurrect those buildings and open businesses, that that's what those parking spots are designed to provide their customers for all businesses yes yeah I'm gonna remind i'd them. like to i'd like to interject as the owner if i may may i speak um just thinking about old bisbee uh, people come to old bisbee and they pretty much land they go to the big parking lot they find their place and then they wander and they pay their respects to wherever the whatever business is on main street so I'm not seeing that people are showing up, driving just to go to this one place, taking up a parking space just for that one place and then leaving or taking it away from another place. They're kind of spreading it all over is the way I see Old Bisbee. And the other thing is that this is uh, for a rezoning application to rezone it from residential, which it is not. It's not going to be residential. I'm not going to build a house on it to commercial, which is more appropriate in this area, which is a commercial area. And that's my understanding of what this motion is or what this proposal is for. I'm not ready to build on it yet. If I was building on it, I would have to have parking spaces, but I'm not building on it yet at this point. If you are building on it, then don't you have to provide your own parking? I mean, I guess that's a question for Joe. So, I mean, if you were building a residence, which you're not intending to do, you would have, either you would have parking or you would be um, on the street parking. Okay, a residence wouldn't be required to provide parking. Okay, so if it's commercial, are they required to provide? A new, build, a new building in Old Bisbee would require their own parking. So if in this situation with the pop-up location for this restaurant, is that still the same? Is Do they have to provide parking for their customers? I don't believe so. 
There's a moratorium on parking in terms of new development downtown. So. No, no, I mean on I mean on the lot itself. So if you drove up there and you had a, you know three spaces or four spaces for people to park and then dying, would that is that the way it should be, Jeff? I can probably clear up some of the confusion if I can answer the questions that Nancy and both the Frasers have asked. Um, firstly, thank you. It's a huge compliment that you think that our little burger stand is doing that much business. That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe that's an insight into the future. Um, as far as the trash goes, we remove our own trash in our own vehicle and we take it to the transfer station. So the trash buildup that many of you saw probably over the holiday weekend, I can assure you 100% was not contributed to by us. We remove um, probably, it's only about four of the black trash bags every time that we work. There's only four of those. That's how much trash we're creating. We take it away in our vehicle and we take it to the refuse station ourselves. So it's not impacting local Bisbee trash bins. My household probably is impacting local Bisbee trash bins more so than the burger stand. Um, as far as the parking goes, what we are finding is that um, it is a very quick experience for people that come and eat. They're not staying for long periods of time. Many of the people are tourists that are already parked overnight that are like staying at the Bisbee Grand Hotel, for example, or up. Castle Rock or even the Copper Queen. So 90%. we end up interacting and talking with a lot of the people that are coming and there's a vast majority of them that are already tourists that have already had a presence in town and have already been parking somewhere. Um, we are also attracting a lot of locals. Uh, that are foot traffic. Most of our traffic is foot traffic. I would say 80 to 90 percent of it is. Um, there are a few cars that we happen to notice that will pull up there and our neighbors are really awesome at 52A. Um, we do have some signs up so that we don't have traffic incidents and if we do notice something that's happening, I'm the first person that runs out there and says, hey, you know, we need to, we need to ask you to please go ahead and park down the street elsewhere. So we are doing quite a bit of policing in terms of the minor, very minor parking issues that have arisen. And we haven't really had any conflicts or pushback yet. Um, when people stay, we are one of the fastest servers in town from what we're being told right now. We're able to process an order for up to 12 people within 15 minutes and send them away with that food. Um, I am also running across the street and hand delivering orders as well as driving on a Vespa or a go-kart or a golf cart rather to local establishments to deliver food. So um, the, the parking space I feel that's below that lot would be full no matter what, with or without us being there. I'm also aware of a local that has four vehicles that are taking up spaces there that do not move. They could all be claimed as abandoned because since we started there six weeks ago, there are four vehicles in that lot that never moved. One is a camper van. One's a yep. camper and the other's a Mercedes. So I would say that individual who's parking for vehicles is probably <laughs> causing more of a parking issue in that lot than our little burger stand that has approximately 20 visitors an hour, half of which are probably on foot that are visiting us. And we're only open Friday to Sunday on the weekend. So we're not impacting any weekday traffic and our here. hours are winter hours so we're only open from noon to four on the weekends Friday Saturday and Sunday if that helps clear up any of the questions that you have about the parking or uh, the trash uh, yeah it does thank you and I don't want you to uh, get the impression that I um, am not uh, for this idea um, I think it's a, in, in premise it's a great idea, but part of this is, um, and I've spoken to on other topics, but it seems that as we grow as a tourist town, we are coming up against um, precedent setting um, um, uh, issues. Um, so that's my concern. Uh, because it's not just the trash, it's not just the parking,
but then it's also, um, you know, we also lack toilets. There's only one toilet that's in City Park, and so uh, that's also an issue. Um, you know, whether it's your business or any other business that, that is brought before planning and zoning, for the purposes of bringing more business to Old Bisbee, we just keep on running up against the same issues over and over and over again. Um, that's my concern, is parking, trash, thank you for explaining that, and then of course bathrooms, because that's the other big one that's in town. And I'm, you know, I have held events in Bisbee before, um, so I, do, I, I really do know what a problem these things are. Commissioner? Let me jump in here a moment. John, would you want to identify, you never identified yourself, would you identify yourself by name and your, your address? John Frazier, Doug Dunn at 79 Main Street. Art Home okay, good. Art Realty. Art Home and Art Realty. No, you're you're talking about your business across the street, and I wanted it was never clearly stated in in, in, in the transcript here in terms of who was speaking. Well, sorry, so thank Art, you. Art, Art Home is the name of the business. Correct. I knew that, but I for the purpose of the record here. Thank you. Other comments or questions? So you go first. Okay, I think we're suffering from agenda drift, Commission. This is this is about a rezoning, which is a permanent solution or a semi-permanent thing. A, a, um, this is not a SUP, a special use permit for a, or nor a referendum on get some burgers, which um, which the business would be more important. I think that the business is a temp, the business that's currently being used there is a temporary issue, and it it all the, the points you brought up, Nancy, especially you, they're very valid. And um, we can address those at a different time or however. But the um, this is just a rezoning issue for the for Miss Asado, really. Asaro, I'm sorry. Correct. And, um, I just want you guys to, to not drift off the agenda. That remember Correct. that this this is a rezoning, not not for something temporary like a like a mobile kitchen. Well, Correct. John, this is uh, to follow on that. If it's just a temporary business, wouldn't a special use permit be more appropriate? Not in that location, it wouldn't. In my okay. opinion, that would be a place for a rezoning since it is right there at the commercial district. I had a couple of comments. That property sits in between my house and my commercial property on the Gulch. Um, I consider all of Main Street, it, although there's a few residential properties there, that whole Main Street prop area is a commercial zone. And just because I was here first doesn't mean the rest of us can't come. There's a lot of that sediment going on here in Bisbee right now, and I think that is wrong. I think we all have an equal opportunity to use our property in for whatever purpose is it's intended to go for. And Main Street is a commercial zone. If we have a parking problem, we have a parking problem. It's not going to go away. Most of the parking problem in Old Bisbee is residents. It's not tourists. It's not uh, shoppers. It, the most of the problems is residents. Because I can claim to be one for a while on the Gulch. I parked on the Gulch for almost six months. I have now moved my vehicle away from there. So parking should not be an issue. This property is not really acceptable for a house or a residence. So it needs to be changed to a, a commercial property. That's all I had. Okay, will you identify yourself, please? Your address? Mike speaking. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, pardon me. I didn't. I didn't recognize your voice. You sounded different. Thank you, Mike. Um, just two other thoughts that came up out of that, um, with respect, you know, to the toilets and everything. Um, we do have some partners locally that are allowing us uh, to utilize uh, their toilets and their business and their places of business, which is very kind of them. Some of our neighbors are offering that to us. Um, also, you know, down the road a while, the business is moderately successful right now, 
it uh, takes a lot of time and, and a lot of burgers at the, the rate that we're selling them for to really even break even. But maybe down the road, that is something we could think about is, is adding some sort of an executive, you know, porta potty on certain weekends, especially event weekends, which may alleviate some things. And we can look at our budget and see if that's something that we can squeeze in. Also, with respect to parking, the extension of premises was just approved by city council, and if we wanted to, which we have not done, we could apply to take and use anywhere up to 30 to 60 feet of parking spaces that are below the burger stand, which we are not requesting that we do. But that is an option that's available to us, in which case that would actually create less parking spaces in that large parking lot that exists below us. And we are not seeking that, but we do have that option available to us as of the last city council meeting. Um, our goal is to create something that is a social distance option that is beneficial to the town, that is beneficial um, considering the current environment in which we all live, and to try to make things better, um, not worse, for Bisbee. And uh, just thank you all for listening and for your consideration and, and understanding and for your thoughts and your comments regarding this tonight. We appreciate um, all of you and, and all of your contributions that you have made in this town uh, individually as well as professionals. So thank you again for the time. Okay, Joe, would you please describe if, we, if the motion before us is rezoning from, from R1 the CM2, and if we were to approve that, what would be the next step in terms of uh, this uh, uh, this mobile kitchen? Well, the, the net. Well, I think you gave me two questions. I don't, but I'm going to answer what I think you answer. You asked me. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I'll do my best. The um, your if if it, if, it, if it is passed, if this um, rezoning is is passed by the um, Planning Zoning Commission, then it will go before the City Council, and the City Council will be notified of what the recommendation was, and they will actually make the decision. There'll be another public hearing. Correct. And if they if they approved it, what would be the next step in terms of approving uh, uh, the, the, uh, the use of that property? And it would, if they approved it, then the rezoning would go through and um, the maps would change and that would become the um, CM2 zoning. But would they not have to have some other requirements in terms of special use permit or whatever? What would, in terms of locating the, uh, the mobile kitchen there? In terms of, of locating the mobile kitchen, there's, um, there's re requirements in the International Plumbing Code which are going to, which fall into play here that every business that um, that is not okay and if you're a restaurant you have to provide you have to provide bathrooms unless you are doing takeout takeouts are given exemption there's um, different exemptions that um, that get some burgers would would be able to use but having tables there to eat actually um, it causes that the need for a bathroom I go but that's outside of what we're discussing. But Correct. It, that's, that's a, it's it's semi relevant. I'm not saying it's not, Doug. No, that's that's what I'm asking is the fact that we're just talking about a rezoning currently, and yeah. the dealing with this particular use would be something that would be would, would come through your office in terms of getting approval to continue operation of the yeah of the the mobile kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we are not tonight, if we vote on this in the affirmative, we would not, it would not be a vote for approving the mobile kitchen. It's strictly um, approval to rezone the property. That's correct. I'm confused. The mobile kitchen is already there. <laughs> it's right. Operating under a permit, I'm assuming. You want to speak to that, Joe? I, I couldn't tell what she said. Oh, she says it's already I, there. Yeah. It's yeah. already there. We've been, very, we've been very permissive with people during during the whole COVID thing, Ginger, because because we're um the the fuel that 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 our city runs on, the engine of our city, it it the fuel that it runs on is tax dollars and business. If we don't have healthy businesses, we don't have a healthy city. And um, we've been I've been um, permissive during the 
as far as people's signs and a lot of a lot of things, including the the get some burger. Now, um, who would have thought that 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 wasn't commercial because that didn't even I don't think it entered anybody's mind until it came until um we were talking about the address and it's like oh no you got a you got a worse problem than that so um but we've been trying we've been trying to encourage business and be be business friendly is the reason why they're allowed to continue up to this point but immediately I I had told um the two principals there with get some burger that they had to um they had to get this to me this application ASAP and they did so uh, I can I can kind of speak to that again as well. Um, I do have documentation if anybody needs to see it, and I did send it to Ms. Williams today, hoping that at least the commission members would receive it that shows uh, images from the 1920s to the 1940s that everything in that area was commercial. There isn't any residential, and as Mr. Ward said earlier, it might have been an oversight that it was zoned R1. Um, so if anybody would like that information just as backup so you know what you're working with, this is very difficult information to find. I had to go through the Historical Museum archives because most of the pictures cut off right where that entrance to the parking lot starts. But if that helps you understand that the zoning uh, is predominantly and should be commercial, that may help you. Um, in addition, if uh, get some burgers, needs to have toilets because we have tables out. We're happy to remove the tables. The reason we added the tables is, as you know, many have seen Stu's barbecue location and his trailer outside of Frank Barco's place at the Bisbee Observer, and that is where we started. Um, he does offer some tables without bathrooms for his guests, and uh, we were there, but it was very busy in a very active area, and there really wasn't room for us to continue working there, though Frank Barco offers the space to us on a complimentary basis. We could start there tomorrow with our trailer and not have to pay any rent. Um, so what we did as the area was crowded, um, we decided to start searching for a location that we could use that would be better, that would also um, allow us to pay rent somewhere, but still allow us to work outdoors considering the social distancing environment. We ended up uh, interacting with Maria. We were kind of led to her because the original space that we wanted to lease was Mr. Cartwright's land, which is adjacent to Castle Rock. It's a very large open space, which we had cleared. We spent uh, time and money out there clearing two very large lots that he owns in the hopes that we could open there and make that a bright spot in town. Um, that deal fell out and uh, we then started to look for a new spot in which case uh, we found Maria and it just has not been even more perfect. I think many of you know when you move to Bisbee you might be guided here and you might be guided to your first home or your first business place and then something goes sideways, which is perfect, and then you are led to a more uh, desirable position as a result if you keep your eyes and your minds open to this. So um, with that said, if, uh, if for some reason Get Some Burgers is holding up Mrs. Sorrow's conversion to commercial too, we would not want that to happen. Um, we will find somewhere else to go and somewhere else to be and somewhere else to operate, or we will not operate at all which is also an option. Um, this is an interim business for us as we hope that our meeting and convention business in which I was making upwards of 500,000 a year will come back to us in the next uh, three to six months to maybe three years. So this is something that we're doing to keep our sanity and to contribute to our community while we wait for our real careers to come back. So I hope we take that into consideration. I wouldn't want to hold up Mrs. Sorrow's rezoning because of our burger stand. If our burger stand is not wanted in this town for any reason, we can make it go away very yeah. easily and very quickly, being that it is highly temporary. Thank you. Well, I, I just Do I have a mo I, oh, I, uh, This is Nancy. I just wanted to add, um, Yvette, thank you for telling us all of that. Um, I really appreciate everything that you said. Um, Joe, I wanted to, you know, apologize for, I guess, going off track with my own concerns. Um, I understand that this is completely a rezoning issue. Um, I totally understand that, uh, but, but, but it's, sometimes it's just not so black and white for me 
because I think about all the other things that are going to come down the road, especially in my current occupation. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, Yvette, I, I do, again, appreciate all of uh, what you told me or us. And uh, Maria, did you have anything to add? Because um, I, I saw you maybe wanting to say something, and uh, I don't know if you were cut off or you didn't know when to jump in there. Me? Uh, Maria. Are we ready to make a motion? This is Ginger. I move the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to Mayor and City Council the rezoning of APN 10362489 from R1 to CM2 located at 60 Main Street. Is there a second? Michael second. Okay. I'll take a roll call vote then. Sandy? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Mike? Yes. Doug? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Move on to the next one, which no. is called agenda item. Huh? Six. Yeah. Public we're just thank you. We're we're leaving the meeting. Um, okay. Thank you for Bye. allowing us to comment and participate and observe uh, Joe and Doug and fellow members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. It's it, we were uh, our, our mailbox was stuffed with notices. We happened to be in the right proximity for this meeting, and and three of the issues you brought up so far were related to us. Uh, and thank you for allowing us to uh, share your meeting uh, and and your comments and thoughts with with us this evening. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you Thank all. You. This next one's related to you too, John. It's a realtor. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get that I, I said that the next one might be interesting to you as a realtor. Well. Okay, let me continue on then. Agenda item six, public hearing on a proposed amendment to the zoning code. Uh, possible recommendation to the mayor and council. Joe, would you Describe this for us. Okay, we we went over this several different several different times, and because the um, there's there'd been a contrary some contrary um, provisions in the in the zoning code that that said that that um, that prevented that prevented for a while that there was no there, there's been no um, ability to rebuild utilizing the um, the setbacks from a demolished or burnt structure in the historic district, and we're trying to restore that. And um, this is seems like the best way to do it. So, um, so that people will be able to rebuild in places without the, without dim, with, without diminishing the setbacks or increasing them, I should say. But I want you guys to know that the the building codes would still be enforced, which um, have a, a stricter. Anytime you're closer than five foot to the property lines. You've got um, one hour fire separations on both sides of a wall and those kind of things. And then sometimes and you get closer than you're not allowed windows, you're not allowed eaves, those things that um, it's, it has to do with science that the, um, the building codes are going to cover to protect. It's not that it's going to be less protection, but um, it's a reasonable solution to a certain kind of like we have. This would allow a good number four to proceed and put another house in that little tiny lot, wouldn't it? Which tiny lot? The one oh. item number four that we had before. The seven hundred square foot lot. It right would be now, awfully hard. Pardon? You you might if you got really creative, but it'd be awfully hard to do. I think it'd be um for residential, you've got to have windows and how do you and you can and you can't put a window when it's when you're closer than two foot to the property line and such. Right. But this this change would allow that to happen. No, it wouldn't allow. It wouldn't allow you to violate the building code. This would allow okay. a rebuilding. Okay. Are there questions or comments from anyone? Commission members, you've talked about this in prior meetings.
And Joe, who writes the uh, the amendment? Is it this committee that writes the amendment, or is it somebody in City Hall that writes the amendment? I usually give you something to um to go off of, but whatever we wind up with will go before the um the city attorney, and um they 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 might adjust what we're saying, but as long as we're not we're not deviating in um, what we're accomplishing, the, the wording might be adjusted to make it more um, legal. Then would it come back to us? No. Okay. Other comments? I guess this is specifically, the motion does not indicate, this is Article 5.3.2D, correct? It does not. It, she she kept it rather um, um, generic in the way that she described it, and um, but I think it is accurate and um, usable. But it wouldn't be used. It'd be um, more specific when it goes before city council. Okay. So the, are we ready to make a motion? Okay, this is Ginger. I'll do it again. I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to Mayor and Council a proposed amendment to the Bisbee Zoning Code to establish the right to rebuild utilizing the setbacks of a demolished or burnt structure on the same parcel in the Bisbee Historic District. Is there a second? I'll second I'll that. Okay. I'll take a roll call vote, Sandy. Yes. Nancy? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Mike? Yes. Doug? Yes. So it's unanimous. Passed. We now move to commissioner comment. This is refrained from any discussion. Comments only. Does anyone have anything that wish to share? Well, I apologize for being late. I could not connect. So. Well, I'm that's sorry. true for me too. That was true for me too. So. Okay. I had problems with the connection. <laughs> Other comments, and also moving on to future agenda items. Let me speak to that then. I think we've gotten, some of us have gotten a letter regarding the need for fencing standards, standards for construction of fences. Is that something we could add to a future agenda meeting? Also, do we need to have, we've had some discussion about how to deal with food trucks. Is that something that we want to have as a future agenda item? I would definitely say that we need to revisit the tiny houses and the food trucks. That is going to be in our world sooner than later. And of course, the third item, which we brought up repeatedly, and it, it kind of frustrates me when we have discussions about parking, which we're having here tonight, uh, the city has not moved forward in terms of implementing a, you know, a, a parking plan for a parking study and plan for Bisbee. So that's certainly a continuing agenda item that uh, we brought up before. And uh, this meeting tonight illustrates that we <laughs> we still need to, to, to work on that. Any other suggestions for future agenda items? Do I have a motion for adjournment? I move we adjourn. <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. And I thank you for... This is an odd meeting here in terms of the electronics didn't work exactly perfectly, but we got this meeting done. So thank you all. Sorry for the problems we had. You guys, you guys are great. <laughs> thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.
Hmm. Oh, yeah. 